Hi, welcome back. This is the second in three in a series of three on the athletic world and culture of Paul's day. We introduced last time that there were four crown games. We looked at the Olympic site where the Olympics came out of and the, the Pythian site at Delphi. Now we're going to show you again a little bit more from the Olympic site, and this would be the tenth slide. These are all together in your PowerPoint there. And this is what we call the wall of shame. You see, the athletes would come right from the temple of Zeus, where they would have prayed their prayers, they would have poured out their drink offerings, they would have made promises, and they would have asked for Zeus's blessing. And then they walk right down this road that you can see, this pathway that leads right into the stadium. And the last thing that they would see going into the stadium is this series of blocks that you can see. And what used to be on top of all those blocks were the busts, the head and shoulders of previous athletes that had competed there. And you might say, well, why is this a wall of shame? These athletes, obvious were athletes that, that were to be remembered, and they were, but not because of their athletic accomplishments, but because they had cheated. Because they had cheated. And you may be able to make out the, the, the etchings in the front of this one stone that actually had the names of athletes that multi-millennia ago were found to be cheaters. And their names have been recorded until the Lord himself comes back for their deeds of shame. You see on your next slide now that this is where the stone is on the left, where the engraving happens and the bust would have sat on top of, and then they walked through the archway into the stadium. The last thing they would see was a reminder of not to cheat. Uh, we could do with a lot more of that today, couldn't we? And you as a church sports minister or a Christian athlete or coach, all the more reason for you to do everything ethically. Plan well for your ministries and run them in ethical ways. You see here back in Olympia, the two lanes of a gymnasium. Gymnasium, the gymnas, was the Greek word for the, the place that those who are naked work out. Yes, the gymnasium is not necessarily something that we should put on a church building because we no longer work out in the, in the nude, but they did. And this was in a portico, so each of those posts would have a roof over it, and it was the, the, the ancient air conditioning. The wind would blow through it because it was awfully hot there. It was stifling. And you would see that this would be two lanes that they would race and they would run. And then on the left-hand side of the picture, you see where the classrooms would be, where they would learn from the poets and they would learn language, etc. Now this is back to the, the Pythian games that I mentioned in the last section for the games at Delphi. Now again, remember that there's nothing that I can connect Paul with, but he would have been aware of these, and I'm trying to give you the, the background to all four of these games so you're familiar with them, so you are, are educated, you have information again that leads to transformation and eventually ministry formation. And the crown of the Pythian games was made of the laurel wreath, and this is what was put around the heads of the athletes that won. You see here the Delphi Stadium. And this is a very rare stadium in the sense that it actually has some bleachers there. These on the right-hand side are where the people would come and sit. This, the Delphi Games, the, the Pythian Games held at Delphi were, were kind of a step ahead in terms of creature comforts. And you can see this on now your 16th slide because on the right, these were actually baths 
where the athletes think of a locker room, think of the, that, that there would be walls around them, but they would go into these and there would be a little bit of water and there would be oil and they would be, be able to groom themselves. And on the left you see the starting blocks, the little grooves where they would put their feet and they would start and they would run. So I'm trying to help you understand that there was a sophistication at Delphi that may not have been at some of the other places. Although you'll see that certainly the Isthmian Games would have been a rival. Now here is the remains of the Nemean Games. Now I believe that there's a great possibility that Paul would have come to Nemea and that he would have seen these sites. This, this is a bit south and west of ancient Corinth. And the Nemean Games uh, are near the ancient city of Argos. They are now on the Peloponnesian Peninsula, moving to the west of Corinth outside. Okay, now I've given you the three of the four crown games. The three were, of course, probably at least known by Paul. In order, I think he would least likely have gone to Delphi. A little more likely they would have been at Olympia. I think all but certain that he was at Nemea. He at least knew where it was. He would have probably walked past it at some point. But the one that I really think is the one that formed his background for his biblical writings was that of Ismia. I-S-T-H-M-I-A. The Ismian games that were there just outside of Corinth. And when we compare the archaeological digs of all of these places, and we compare that to his writings and his knowledge, it would seem that this is the one, the Isthmian Games, that would be the most that likely to serve as the foundation for his writings. Okay, now, we're going to take a break here, and we're going to come back in our next and third and last section on the athletic world of Paul's day, and we're going to talk about those Isthmian Games in more detail. But before we do that, I want you as a sports minister to know that you don't have to be in the center like the Isthmian Games were to be effective or to be needed. All of these three crown games of the four, the other three that Paul maybe never went to, they all needed Paul. They all needed the gospel message. So you can be in the smallest little church, the smallest little community. You can be in a place that nobody will ever read about. But where you are is important. Don't think that you have to be in the largest church with the largest facility, with the largest program to be effective for the gospel. There's a lot of pagan athletics out there, just like there was at Delphi, just like there was at Olympia. And they may even be spiritual, but they're not Christian. And you can be wherever you are, and God can use you right where you are. I hope that's an encouragement to you to continue to be faithful right where you are. So, Join us next time. We'll take you now to where Paul, most of his writings would have come out of. Again, we're glad that you've been with us through this Theology of Competition and Sport course through the Agone Institute. I'm your professor and host, Dr. Greg Linville.